Now, this morning, I would like to um, talk about divine wells of provision. Wells of provision. Because this year has been the year that we are going to redig and repossess. I don't know whether you are, we are in, in February, we are going to March. I don't know whether you have dug any well this far. And all of us, I know we are at different wells. Because I know we are at different seasons in our life. I'm at a different season in my life. And I have a well that I am digging. It may be different from your well. And for me, I want to dig that well that's going to provide for me. I don't know which well that you are at this morning. We, we shall see a number of wells. And I don't know, I want you to identify yourself where you are. Which well that you are in. And today, the Holy Spirit is releasing passion and energy to us to, in order not to become weary. So that, so that you may be able to dig wells. And I know somebody here, God has been speaking to you about provision. Somebody has been, God has been speaking to somebody about spiritual wells. Or even redigging the wells of revival. Digging the wells of being prayerful. Reading the word of God. Attending fellowships. And many others. You know there are three types of wells. Those that are found naturally flowing out of the ground. We call them natural springs. They are God-given supply. You don't need to do anything. You just walk to a natural spring and get some water. Where I come from, there is a neighbor. We had actually a neighbor and there was a spring that was bordering our farm and their farm. But the source of this spring was actually coming more from their farm. And this spring was producing very, very clean water. So we used to go there and fetch water for our drinking. And if one is thirsty, you would go there and, and cut a um, uh, doma leaf and then you can chota some water and drink from it. I know there are some people who can identify themselves with this. And then you can see even sometimes a jorori in that water. And then you are trying to throw it away so that you may drink that water. But what was interesting is that as the water was flowing towards our shamba, of course there was more water that was coming into our lad. And, and days passed by and then the water became less and less and less. And lo and behold at that time I remember our neighbor had uh, went to look for stones and covered the well. Maybe they thought that uh, the water would stop flowing. But, but what happened that is that the water continued to flow towards our place. That is one type of uh, a well. 
The other one is the one that you must dig yourself. There was no well before. And therefore you must take the initiative to start digging. And uh, digging a well is not easy. A new well it is a lot of work. You know where I live uh, there are some neighbors who have started now putting up their uh, their houses. And my immediate neighbor who is um, in front of me had dug a well. And he started using water from that well to build. Then his neighbor also started the uh, uh, building. And he was using that water from that well also. But somehow along the way there was a disagreement. I don't know which one. So the other neighbor looked for the same person who had dug that well. And asked him to dig a well for him. So this guy looked around a few meters, maybe two meters or two and a half meters from that well well, he sank another well. But something that is very interesting, the first well was a shallow well and there was a lot of water. The second well, the guy continued to dig, continued to dig, it was so deep and there was hundred in water. Those who have dug wells, they know that experience. The expert can show you this is the place. You start digging a well. You go a hundred meters down. And then there is no water. And then somebody else will come dig 20 meters and then there is water. That's another well. The third well is those who uh, those that existed before but you have to redig so that uh, the water will start coming out again. So there was a well there, there was water coming out, but it was stopped by some elements of some enemies. And for me to see this, I see as if it is the way the enemy stops a certain supply into one's life. Maybe you had a business that, that was applying to your needs. And all of a sudden that business goes down. That source of income is stopped. Or you could have been employed and then you are fired. The source of supply stops. But today we shall look to a number of wells because I'm, I believe that God is going to speak to somebody and deliver someone from these wells that are drawing us back in Jesus' name. Church, there are times that we work with God and there are times to simply receive the inheritance. He has given us sometimes a free will. All that is required is for you to go and you know, and get water from there. Some other times he, you will be required to dig the well yourself. And when you dig, then God will ensure that water will come out. But one thing I would like to say, and which you should be confident that if God has shown you a well, he has set every means 
case you need to access that spring. God will give everything that is required to get water out of that spring or out of that well. Praise the name of the Lord. I am speaking to somebody that God is equipping to get well, to get water out of that well that you are sitting on. Because God will ensure that you have water in that well. The Bible says in Isaiah 12 and verse 3 that with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. With joy we will draw water from the wells of salvation. If you are thirsty, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. If you are hungry, you will draw from the wells of salvation. Whatever need that you have, you can draw it from the wells of our salvation. We are introduced in the, uh, from the Bible to a family that is a, a family which is like my family and your family. And this is the family of Abraham and Sarah. And we find that they are living a normal life like your life and my life. Doing things and believing God for many things. And at this point in time they are old and now they are wondering who will be our who will inherit our possessions or our wealth. And now we, we, we find Abraham, God visiting Abraham in Genesis chapter number 15. And God is promising Abraham of many blessings. But then Abraham is asking God. Abraham is asking God, what will you give me seeing I go childless and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? You know, he is thinking many things. As a man, you think many things. You think about your life when you are here on earth. You also think about life after you, you leave this earth. So he is looking around and he is thinking, oh, since we do not have a child, and, and, and God has, is telling him that he is going to be blessed, he does not know this world will go to who, except what he had planned in his heart. Abraham had a, a very loyal and good servant called Eliezer. A very obedient servant. He had made him, him to be responsible over everything that he had. He trusted Eliezer. And he thought, if today I die, I think Eliezer will take over. And I know some, sometimes we are thinking the same thoughts like uh, Abraham. You may not have a lot, whatever that God has given you, you are looking around and you are thinking, who will I leave this wealth? Who will I leave this wealth? But I want to say this again. Because they were talking like a normal family. Uh, we have Abraham, we have Sarah, and they are sitting there in, in, in the dining room. And they are thinking, now what do we do? And Sarah is coming with a brilliant idea. Let us do something. Uh, you, can, you can have our maid servant, Hagar, so that she can give us a child who can inherit. But remember, for Abraham, he had sought God in chapter 15, the previous chapter. 
katika sura ya 15 Abraham alikuwa ameomba Mungu. But with but for Sarai he did, she did not consult God. Instead she played the role of God. Ah Sarai hakuomba Mungu lakini yeye alichukua mahala pa Mungu. She tried to control the will of God by seizing the initiative from God. Aka taka kuelekeza mapenzi ya Mungu. And it happens many times because we can see it also in the Garden of Eden. We see Eve giving Adam that forbidden fruit. And Adam agreed and ate the fruit. In the same way that Abraham agreed and and, uh, and 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 Hagar conceived kama vile ibrahim alikubali yale mawazo na maneno ya sarai she did abraham did not refuse abraham hakukata but what happened is that uh, Hagar conceived and be, uh, i mean she became pregnant hakuna yule haga ambaye alishika mimba but when she conceived things did not go according to what uh, everyone had anticipated because Sarah started feeling de- despised because Hagar has conceived and anyone everybody can see it but with her she has tried many times it has not been possible and therefore again Sarah went to the husband and told the husband I think this thing is not good I don't think we should continue living together the way we are living in this house and Abraham told his wife that do everything that you can do I mean if I leave this matter in your hands and from that day on we fight Sarah abusing and and being very harsh to Hagar. It reached to a point that Hagar had to run away. She ran away and went and laid somewhere. And this is the place that the age of God went and met her. In Genesis 16 and verse 8, Angel of God asked Hagar, Where are you coming from and where are you going? I am sure the angel knew where Hagar was coming from. And I'm sure the angel of God knew where Hagar was headed to. But Hagar replied, I'm fleeing from the presence of my mistress Sarai. Um, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress Sarai. Church, I want to say that running away does not change relationships. Running away does not change situations. Running away does not change the circumstances that are surrounding you. We know the story of Jonah. How he was running away from, you know, from the presence of God. He did not want to obey to go and take the message. But indeed, even Jonah in that uh, fish in, the, in that belly's fish he was still that servant of god that god was setting that did not change jonah you are running away from god's presence or running away from whatever is um, is bothering you does not change you. And church, you know we run away from different circumstances. It could be maybe you have a very evil boss. 
sana. And that boss have been trying many things Am, in your life. Amekuwa kujaribu mambo mengi katika maisha yako. And you feel that you cannot stomach that boss any longer. Unahisi ya kwamba huwezi kana yule mkubwa tena. And you feel that you want to run away. Unahisi ya kwamba mimi ni lazima nikatoroke. Maybe you've been living with a relative that is not also not very homely to you. Pengine umekuwa ukiishi na yule jamaa ambaye si mzuri sana kwako. You have a relative that is very very Uh, is is not good at all to you i am careful with the words because i'm also living with family members and maybe because of that situation that that house you feel you cannot no longer stay in there and you are running away from there But I want to say this church Haga continued to be Sarah's maid and it remained her duty to serve her mistress. Na nataka kusema kanisa kwamba Hagai aliendelea kuwa mjakazi wa Sarai. No wonder the angel of God told her in Genesis 16 and verse 9. Na diposa malaika wa Mungu akamwambia katika mwanzo 16 mstari wa 9. Return to your mistress and submit yourself to her authority. Rudi kwa mkubwa wako na ukaweze kunyenyekeza mbele zake. The angel did not assist Hagar to run away. Uh, malaika hakumsaidia kutoroka. But the angel told Hagar please go back to your mistress and submit yourself to her praise the name of the lord church we need to learn to submit in difficult circumstances and trust god who sees all and can deliver and vindicate us when you are facing a tough situation in your life you do not have to run away you do not have to run away because god will see you through you know in that place in that situation that you are in there is a well There is a well beside you and that well is called bia la hairoi Bia la Hairoi. Bia la Hairoi. Amen that way. It means have I also here seen him who sees me. Inasema ya kwamba mimi pia nimemuona yule ambaye ananiona. Have I also here seen him who sees me. Nimemuona hapa yule ambaye pia ananiona. Because the angel of God appeared to Hagar. Kwa sababu malaika wa Mungu alikuja kwa yule Haga. And you know Haga thought he is far away from anyone who knows her. Na Haga alikuwa anafikiria ya kwamba ako mbali sana na watu wote ambao wanamjua. She thought she is hidden even from the eyes of God. Alikuwa anafikiria hata amefichwa kutoka macho ya Mungu. She thought she is far away even from her mistress. Alikuwa na anajua anajufikiria kwamba ako mbali sana hata na kwa mkubwa And she comforted herself now I can stay here nobody is seeing me. Na akajiambia ya kwamba mimi naweza kaa hapa kwa sababu hakuna mtu ananiona. But I want to I came this morning to tell someone. Lakini asubuhi ya leo naja kukuambia that there is a God that sees you. Ya kwamba kuna Mungu ambaye anakuona. Wherever that you are There is a God that is seeing you. You know Hagar was dejected and broken. She was pregnant nobody loved her. She was running away from anybody who knows her. She felt like the scum of this earth. She felt the least in this world. And I'm I'm sure Hagar thought at one time thought I wish the earth can open and swallow me up. This situation I am in it is not myself who drove myself to it. Something was planned and now I find myself in this situation. And now instead I'm being chased away from that house. She felt unloved. She felt rejected. She felt she has reached her dead end. 
She did not know what to do next. She did not know there was a well beside her. Until the angel of God came. And I am talking to somebody this morning. Maybe I am your angel this morning. Maybe I am that messenger that has been sent by God to you this morning. You have been feeling dejected. You have been feeling like nobody wants you. Because something has happened in your life. Not that it is because of your, your initiative. But you found yourself under those circumstances. And now you do not know what to do. I want to let you know there is a God that sees. There is a God that is seeing you. There is a God that is watching you. There is a God that is looking at you. You can never hide from the presence of God. You can never hide from the eyes of God. God is seeing you. God is watching you. Hallelujah. There is a well beside you. Kuna kisima pale umeka. There is a well be, beside you. Kuna kisima kando yako. And now what you need to do Na kila unastahili kufanya is to rise up to your feet ni ukainuke kwa miguu yako and dust yourself up na ukaweza kujivu and then you return to where you came from. You don't have to continue staying in that place. Because God has a divine plan and purpose for you. You do not have to continue staying feeling bitter upon yourself. Sympathizing yourself. You feel like you, are, you cannot make it any, any longer in life. I want to let you know there is a God that is watching you. He is telling you, come back home. Return back home. Return back home. Return back home. Because he has a plan for you. Did you know that the child Hagar was carrying, God promised to bless him. And it is the angel actually who gave the name of that child and gave that name Ishmael. Did you know that negative thing that you are battling with today? It can be your Ishmael. Praise the name of the Lord. Whatever that you are battling with, it can be a source of blessing to your life. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, there are so many young, young girls that are taken care of, uh, taken uh, advantage of. And once they get pregnant, you see the young men, they run away. Or, or even old men, they run away. Nobody wants you. And you are wondering, now my life has been ruined. You are there, you, you got pregnant not because you had planned for it. And the person uh, you are engaged with also ran, ran away. And uh, that person no longer wants you at all. And you are wondering, God, what do I do? I came to tell you this morning that child that you are given birth to will be an Ishmael in your life. You should not look at that child and see a bad omen in your life. That child will be an Ishmael. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, the second well I would like us to look quickly is the well of Isaac. We have seen the well of Beal Hairoi. Genesis chapter number 26, verse 20. The Bible says, But the husband of Geral. Let me read it. Verse 20. But the huntsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac, huntsmen saying, 
The water is ours. So he called the name of the well Isaac because they quarreled with him. Praise the name of the Lord. So this is a time when Isaac uh, had, 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 Isaac had gone um, to a place and then his huntsmen, they wanted to water the animals and they saw a well and therefore they redug this well. But, the, uh, but we have other huntsmen who came and started quarreling with them. And this is the first well that Isaac is digging. And it is unfortunate, it is a, a well that is full of frustrations. It is a well that is full of struggles. Just like you and me, we sometimes we are full of struggles in our lives. And it is the place where every day seems to be a battle. Isaac is that place when you wake up in the morning, you start battling with the enemy. Isaac is that well that you feel that always there is somebody who is against me. Isaac well is that place you feel that you want to live for God, but somehow you keep on falling. Isaac, well, is that place where you want to fast, but you, you cannot fast. Isaac, is that well that sometimes you feel, I want to live for God, but challenges start coming to your life. And you feel like giving up. You know, there are many times when every morning that we are waking up because of the things that we have carried. When you start praying, the only kind of prayer you pray is binding and loosing the devil. Every time that you are going before the presence of the Lord, you are attacking the devil. You are, you are binding evil spirits because of the struggles that you are having in your current life. And therefore, church, if every moment in your prayer there is no time of thanksgiving it's only um, binding and losing you are in the, in, in a, in the thick, thickness of a battle and you are battling with the enemy. But I came here to let you know that there is a God that sees you in that battlefield. There is a God that watches over you and he's going to deliver you out of Egypt. I remember years ago I had an Isaac and that Isaac well was not good. This is the time when I wanted to get married and I remember we had made all the plans and one month before my wedding I lost my job. So I was, I was getting married a jobless person. And then uh, two and a half weeks before my wedding, I had an auntie that was very close to me, very close to our family. And because for me, I grew up in the rural areas. We used to call her uh, Tatawa Nairofi. 
Tulikuwa tunamuita ashangazi wa Nairobi. Because she was living in the city. Kwa sababu alikuwa anaishi mjini. And she had promised me that she would take care of uh, some of the things that the people will eat. Na alikuwa ameniahidia kwamba atashughulikia viti vya kula. She had promised to, she had promised to pick pilau for the you know for for the wedding. Alikuwa ameahidia kwamba angepika pilau kwa sababu ya So I, so we didn't budget for that. Because I was sure that she would do it. But two weeks before my wedding, she got a, a heart attack. And then and she passed on. So I had uh, two problems now. I didn't have a job. My auntie who wanted to cook for for our wedding Shangazi, now she has passed on. And I was mourning indeed. Now the that thing that happened. The eve of my wedding it was 20 uh, my wedding was 26th of November 1994. Uh, November. On 25th, the, the groomsmen we went to get our suits. Siku kabla ya harusi, walipoenda kuchukua msuti za wale wasimamizi. Amen. My wife is here, Florence. She can attest to this. Bibi yake yako hapa, ataweza ku... Uh, we went to get those suits from a tailor along Kikoro Road in, in town. And uh, yeah, we went in the evening. It was the last thing I was doing that day. But when we went there, lo and behold, the suit was supposed to be gray. All the, suits were, all the suits were supposed to be gray. But then I had two gray suits. That was my suit and for the best man. Then the other suits were, were brown. And then the other suits were actually blue. So, uh, you, the, that tailor or that gentleman, Kamlesh, actually was an Indian, was trying to explain something to me, but I couldn't hear anything. So, I took the suits and we, we left. So, you can imagine our wedding, uh, we had uh, people with the gray, blue, brown. And, and then the ladies, I think, were wearing pink. Is it pink or red? So it looked like a rainbow. Now, the Saturday of the wedding, early in the morning, because all the men we slept together, I couldn't sleep well because I was bothered in my heart. My spirit was restless. I tried to sleep, I couldn't sleep. So at around 3 that going to 4, I woke up. So, and all the other boys, of course, were asleep. I tried to look around where I could pray. Because those single rooms, you know, there is a bed, there is a sofa, there is a kitchen there. So I went under the bed. That was the only available space. And because of the things that I was going through, I didn't have a moment of worship. I didn't have a moment of worshiping God. I started attacking the devil with all of my might. I started attacking and praying against the devil, against, uh, against the devil with all of my might. So I prayed and I prayed with a lot of energy, with a lot of vigor. Until all the boys, they woke up. And, and one of them asked me, and he's my friend and he's a pastor today. He asked me in my vernacular, maybe I should first of all speak in vernacular. 
wa murokera tene yoguo brother what happened between you and satan kwa sababu you have because you have really woken up early to attack him what did you you and the devil what did you do yesterday that you had to wake up so early and start facing him but let me tell you Haga had a similar situation because he was feeling rejected he was feeling that i am the scum of this world he felt like if i meet with the devil today i will wrestle with the devil and defeat him in jesus name Um, the well of Isaac is that well of struggle. Uh, the well of Isaac is that well whereby you are not seeing anything good only struggling with the enemy. Uh, But I want to say this don't stay at Isaac you must move on. Psalms 30 and verse 5 the Bible says for his anger is but for a moment. for his for his anger is for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Praise the name of the Lord. So you might be struggling the whole night. But I want to let you know that joy will come in the morning. Your morning is coming. Weeping will not be forever. Struggling will not be forever. You must move on. Lamentation 3 verse 22 the Bible says that through the Lord's masses we are not consumed. Because his compassion fail not they are new every morning great is your faithfulness praise the name of the lord Amen. the masses of the lord are new every morning the masses of the lord are new every morning great is his faithfulness the lord is a faithful god In that place of Isaac you are struggling. When your morning comes. The masses of the Lord are new. And the other well quickly is Sitna well. Genesis 26 and verse 21. Then they dug another well and they quarreled over that one also. So he called its name Sitna. No Sitna is that well of separation. Sitna is that well of separation. That well that you shall, shall separate you from all you know all the calamities of your life. It is a hard well to dig because it is stepping out with God. Stepping out away from any comfort zone. Sitna is moving to another level. It is a well that you have to move to another level. Away from the struggles that you've been struggling before. Leaving behind all those things. Because God is ahead of you. Yes, we declare war on this well. Against the enemy. Because we are going to be separated from all those lack and wants. We may tell we, may, we tell the enemy you may have filled up our wells before. Unaambia adui ya kwamba unaweza kuwa ume But from this one you'll never feel them again. You have tried to earn a living from a certain place. But the devil is trying to shortchange you with that. 
You may be trying many things but somehow you do not make it in life. I want to let you know you must come to a place Sitna. Well of separation. We must separate ourselves from all those. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 6 and 17 Therefore, therefore come out from their midst and be separate. Says the Lord and do not touch what is unclean and I will welcome you. Job 17 and verse 9 the, the righteous keep moving forward and those with the clean hands become stronger and stronger. Paul told Corinthians, I do not touch what is unclean. And Job says, and those with the clean hands become stronger and stronger. Let us preserve our lives with holiness, church. Let us not allow ourselves to touch anything that is ungodly. Let us not allow ourselves to walk with things that are unholy. If you want to be stronger to go to the next phase of your life with the blessings of God you must live a holy life. Your hands must be clean. You must not touch anything that is unclean. And the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 43 forget what what happened in the past and do not dwell on events from long ago. Do not remember what the past failures. Forget all the hurtings that you got before. At the well of Isaac, forget whatever happened to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Paul told the church at Philippi that brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. Forgetting what lies behind me. You must forget that which was you, you used to struggle with and look forward to where God is leading you to. The Lord will guide you continually. Giving you water when you are dry and restoring your strength. You will be like a well-watered garden. Like an ever-flowing spring. Praise the name of the Lord. The other well quickly I would like to say to talk about is the well of Rehoboth. The well of room. Genesis 26 verse 22. And he moved from there and dug another well. And they did not quarrel over it. So he called its name Rehoboth. Because he said, For now the Lord has made room for us. And we shall be fruitful in the Lord. The Lord has made room for us. The Lord has enlarged us. He will cause us to be fruitful here. This is the well of maturity church. It is the well of those who have made it through the struggles. It is the well of those that have separated themselves. And then you 
be able to go to your Rehoboth. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, in this well, you will not be struggling any longer. You know, you'll be waking up in the morning thinking the way you used to struggle is the same way you shall struggle. But as you wake up and you start doing your things, you start finding open doors for you. You start finding things that had been hidden long time ago. You start finding people giving you a lot of favors. You wake up in the morning and you are going to your office. Instead of the quarrels from your boss, you find your boss has prepared for your promotion. In the name of Jesus Christ. Then you wake up in the morning going to your business and you are thinking that you shall still struggle with the little things that you are selling there. But at this place of Rehoboth you will find customers who start flocking in. We will not struggle to sell your wares. We will not struggle to sell your services. Whatever that you are doing you do it with a lot of ease. Because you have gone through your Isaac, you have gone through your Sitna, and now you are at your Rehoboth. Hallelujah, praise the name of the Lord. Many people never reach this place because they give up because they give up or burn out. When you are opening the first well, a lot of fightings. So you give up. Rehoboth belongs to the people who are not giving up in life. And I want to say this church that only after Rehoboth will God appear to you and bless you. All along God had not appeared to Isaac and blessed him. He never appeared at Isaac. He never appeared at Sid but when he was at Rehoboth God appeared to Isaac hallelujah he told him I'm the God of your father Abraham do not fear for I am with you do not fear for I am with you the blessings of being at Rehoboth is God's presence wherever you go God is going to go with you. Whatever you do, God will be there. Wherever you are, God's presence will be there. I don't know whether you are in, in your Rehoboth. Is the presence of God there? Is the presence of God there? God said in, God told Isaac that I will bless you and multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. If you have arrived at Rehoboth, God will bless and multiply you. God will multiply blessings. He will not add blessings. If you have 10 blessings, God will not add 10 blessings to make 20. If you have 10 blessings, God will multiply 10 by 10 to be 100 blessings. He will multiply those blessings. God is going to give you years of increase. You won't walk in lack but in plenty. The Bible says, enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. 
kupanua mipaka yako. You know the Bible says in the book of Psalms 126 I like this one verse. Biblia inasema katika Zaburi 126 that when Zaburi. the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion we were like those who dream. May the Lord make you once he has brought you back make you feel like you are dreaming. Ah Mungu akikurejesha wacha ukahisi kwamba kama kana kwamba ni wewe unaota. There is somebody here. Kuna mtu mahali hapa. That God gonna take you back. Ya kwamba Mungu atakurejesha mahali. Gonna bless you. Mungu atakubariki. And you feel like you are in your dream land. Na utahisi kana kwamba unaota. And that is my prayer today. Na hilo ndio ombi langu. This morning I am here. So that I may receive these blessings from God. And finally as I as I wind up now. Is the well of Shemba. Shemba. Shemba the well of oath. Genesis 26 verse that that to that three the Bible says and it came to pass the same day that Isaac's Servants came and told him about the well which they had dug and said to him we have found water so he called it Shemba therefore the name of the city is Beersheba to this day praise the name of the Lord this uh, this well of Shemba Isaac uh, Hans men they dug it after they went after uh, after they dug Rehoboth uh, wala wachungaji wa Isaac walikichimba baada ya kuchimba Rehoboth the well of Rehoboth is for your supply kile kisima cha Rehoboth ni cha kukupatia yale mahitaji yako and once god has given you plenty na mungu akishakupea utele take great care ukajichunge na uwe mwangalifu sana that your life is now comfortable ya kwamba usiwe mtu wa kukaa tu kitako and you forget god na ukasahau mungu where he has brought you from kule amekutoa and you forget there is a future generation coming after you na ukasahau ya kwamba kuna kizazi ambacho shaja after the well of rehoboth baada ya kisima cha rehoboth The huntsmen of Isaac dug another well. Ah uh, And this is a very important well. That all of us also need to dig. Because it is the well of oath. It is the well of oath. And this well of oath is not for yourself but for your future generation. It is the well for future generation. Because Isaac had come to a place in his life. And that is the goal like the goal of every believer. Where, where the enemy looks for you to make peace with you pale ambapo adui anakutafuta ndio mkaweza kusikilizana those that chased you away wale ambao walikufukuza now they come back to you wanakuja kwako and they seek peace na wanatafuta amani and this is the position of every believer we should endeavor to be at na hicho hiyo inastahili kuwa tashauku ya kila muumini having peace with all of our enemies kuwa na amani na wale adui zetu but as he made peace The husband came and they told him that we have found water at Sheba. And years later, Genesis 46, we see uh, Jacob the son of Isaac coming back to Beersheba. And he had a prophetic encounter with God. Akawa na mapatano ya kinabii na Mungu. In this place of Beersheba. Mahala hapa Beersheba. He had visions of the night. Akawa na maono usiku. Because verse two, the Bible says. Kwa sababu mstari wa pili mstari. Then God spoke to Israel in the visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob, verse 3, he said, I I am God, the God of your father. Do not fear to go down to Egypt for i will make of you a great nation there praise the name of the lord we need to dig the well of shimba 
Tunastahili kuchimba kisima cha sheba. Because our children the future generation will find a place to come and once they come there suddenly god will appear to them suddenly god will appear to their lives and god will speak to them but woe if you have not dug that well the future generation will not have a place god will speak to them and i would like us to wake up this morning can we rise up to our feet as we end this service I don't know in which well you are at. I don't know whether you are at Isaac. I don't know whether you are Sheba. I don't know whether you are at Sitna. I don't know whether you are at Biala Roy. Where Hagar found God. When the angel of God spoke to her. There could be somebody else also who is in this place. You have a thirst and a hunger for God. And you came in this sanctuary. Because you want God to fill you. You want to meet with your maker. You want to meet with Jesus. And this is the well of Jacob. There was a Samaritan woman went to this well of Jacob and Jesus was there. I came to let you know that Jesus is here. This would, might be the well of your Jacob because you are going to fight Jesus here. You shall fight the one who shall give you water that you never thirst again. And guess what? Jesus knows your life. He knows everything that you are going through. Jesus perceived, she, Jesus knew the life of this Samaritan woman was married to five husbands. Very different husbands. And the current one that she was having was actually somebody else's husband. But this morning, I would like to let you know like Jesus told the Samaritan woman. John 4 and verse 14. That whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain. Well of water spring up into everlasting life. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, uh, Reverend Millicent, uh, the other day she spoke Ezekiel 47 and verse 9, and she said that swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because the water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. There is a river of God flowing in this sanctuary. Every dead thing will become alive. Is there something that you feel that has died long time ago in your life? This morning there is a river of life flowing through. You need to touch it. Praise the name of the Lord. I would like to pray uh, three kinds of prayer this morning. I would like to pray for those people who have been taken advantage of. And then you are left on your own. And out of that encounter, maybe even you have a child. Like Hagar. Or it could be it, it could be another being taken advantage of 
in another way maybe in your place of work maybe in your family maybe in in places that you do, you do not know I would like to pray for you. But if you have a child, I would like to declare that child shall be blessed and shall be mighty in the Lord in the name of Jesus. That child shall be like Ishmael. And if you if you are pregnant and the man has run away I would like to tell you do not run away come back to God God is waiting on you There is a God who sees you There is a God who sees you There is a God who is watching you There is a God who is seeing your your struggles Father in the name of Jesus I want to thank you for that person who has been taken advantage of and they are feeling they are so dejected and rejected they feel like they are not wanted in this earth and they have run away from your presence they have run away from you oh god and they are contemplating of finishing up their lives they want this uh, they want their life to come to an end i pray for such a one in the name of jesus you have reminded us that you are god that sees may you see them wherever they are may you reach out to them wherever they are may you encourage them wherever they are yes they may be running away but you are calling them to come back in the same way that Haga you called her back to their mistress I call them back back to their places oh god and my father you shall bless them indeed may you turn their situation for their good in the name of jesus christ amen, amen. another another type of people I like to pray there are those people with abusive spouses maybe your husband is very abusive or even your wife is abusive and in that house you don't feel like you want to live in that house any longer and as a matter of fact maybe a lady you could have left that house and you could have left that marriage and there is also a man who had a very abusive marriage and, and and you have separated and you are at crossroads you do not know what to do you do not know whether to uh, to divorce you do not know whether you should move on you are left there and you are struggling in life I want I came here to let you know there is a God that sees. I came to let you know there is a God that is watching over your life. Your solution will not be found in the courts. The, your solution be found will not be found in the judges. But your solution will be found in Christ Jesus. It's only in God who can be able to restore that marriage. It is only God that can be able to give you a solution from that marriage. And I'm praying for such a person. 
who is at this crossroad. You do not know what to do. Father, in the name of Jesus, there are so many people that are hurting this morning. They are hurting because they are being hurt by their spouses, Lord. And even some, they have separated, Lord. And their life looks like it has been stagnant for a long time. They do not know whether they should go on or what they should do. They don't know whether they should divorce or move on. But Father God, I want to thank you. You are God that gives solutions where there is no solution. You are God that answers prayers when you call upon your name. If you did it for Haga, oh God, you can be able to do it for such a one, oh Lord. Encourage them, dear Father. The Lord, they may be able to come out of their situations, Lord. And my Father, we know that you shall bless them and bless them indeed. May you turn around their lives this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. The other people that would like to pray for is those that are struggling in this life. They are at Ezekiel. Every day seems to be a battle. Living for Christ is becoming an uphill task for you. You are battling in life. Sometimes you don't know whether you are born again or not born again. Sometimes you give a testimony and you are wondering within yourself, is it really true what I'm, whatever I'm saying? There is a God that is going to change that situation. You could be also here in this sanctuary. You are discouraged in life. You are well educated. You cannot secure a good job. Every place that you are knocking, the doors are not. The doors are, are closed. You try to do this. You try to do that. Nothing seems to be working. You are even ashamed to tell people you are a graduate. You are looking around, you know, to do something just to have something for you, you to feed on. But I want to let you know there is a God that is seeing you this morning. You even don't want to tell people the kind of a job that you are doing. Because it is not equivalent to your academic qualifications. You feel discouraged in this life. You are at that place of Isaac. But there is a God that sees you. This struggle is coming to an end. You could have a business. And that business used to do very well. The devil somehow came and many things went about and that business is no longer making anything. It is like the hearts men who came and and stopped that well from giving you water. You have tried to, to start up another business and nothing doing. You are thinking, am I having a bad omen in my life? You are wondering, is it that our family is is, 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 is not positioned to become blessed. You are wondering what to do. There is a God that will see you through, my brother, my sister. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for such a person that is discouraged in this life. They are having so many battles in this life. May you see them through, oh God. There is that person, dear Father, they are well educated. They've been struggling so much to get a good job, but nothing doing. 
May you open a well for them. May you open a well for them, O oh God. For anyone that is struggling in their Christian work, Lord. May you make them to move on to their Rehoboth, dear Father. Where they will no longer struggle again, dear Father. Their Christian work will be fun to be. They will have joy in serving you, O God. In the name of Jesus Christ. And the last the last people I'd like to pray for. I would like to pray for these people who are at the Samaritan at at the Samaritan well or the well of Jacob. At the well of Jacob. You came here, you are not born again. You like to give your life to the Lord Jesus. Who will give you water that you never thirst again. I would like to give you that opportunity. Jesus Christ is here. He knows you. He knows you. He knows you. He knows what you are going through. And he is here to help you. I want to open this altar to such a person so that we pray together in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Is there such a person can you lift up your hand? I want to see it. I want to see it. You like to have. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I want to pray for those people that are the well of Jacob. They have come here in order to drink water. But Jesus, you are here to be able to give them the water that will make them never thirst again. The water of life. The water of life. The water of life. Lord, I pray that God, you shall give them that water that they will never ever thirst again. They may not have the courage to come here, but you see wherever they are. You see wherever they are studying. Reach out to them in that place, Lord, and give them that water. And this we ask in Jesus' name. This we ask in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah.